Hello everyone, welcome back to the Divine Healers Podcast. I am so excited for today's podcast. I've been talking a lot about hormones and healing and how it relates to our business on my Instagram page and I love how interested everyone is about this. It's been something that I have been working on really closely for my business to find flow, to find ease, to find opportunities. And truly, if you are an experienced healer, finding the connection between your body and your business is the only way that you can grow it. So I am giving you all the tools to determine how you can find this connection with your body and your business, how you can reclaim the power over your hormones and find harmony in your hormones and therefore find a flow in your business today. Now, before we get into that, I always like to start with an astrological update. So we have our new moon in Cancer that's occurring this Monday, which is July 17th. And Cancer is ruled by the moon. So she's real cozy being in that sign. And this is all about connecting to your intuition, your emotional intelligence, being the mother, the nurturer. And when it's at the time of a new moon, the new moon is a time for a pause, for a rest. And it's the perfect time to nest, to be at home, to nurture yourself, to eat really grounding foods, to connect to your intuition and have space. I know personally this weekend, I'm going to be taking some time for rest. And I know how hard that is because we're in summer. There's more daylight hours. There's more fun events to do in social gatherings. And if we don't balance that with these natural cycles that we have of resting, then we will burn ourselves out. We'll get injured. We'll get sick. And the body will force you to have that sacred pause. So just kind of stay close to those type of themes. Notice if you've kind of been feeling the excitement of summer, and there's time just to take a little bit of a pause to find balance. I'm going to have more journal prompts to come on how you can work with this new moon in Cancer next week. You can follow me on Instagram. I'm going to be going live and also have a full post with journal prompts so that you can work with this energy. And if you're wanting even more support and intuitive messages from your guides on what's going on, currently in your life and how you can maximize on this energy. We have our Divine Healers membership event happening on Tuesday, July 18th, and we are going to be doing our full new moon ceremony. So that's where I give the full astrological forecast. We provide one-on-one coaching for what you are, what's occurring in your personal astrology chart and how that's affecting the lessons and the challenges that you're getting right now and the opportunities. And then I got everyone through a Reiki healing experience. As I mentioned, this is a really good time for rest and to receive intuitive messages. And the Reiki energy is so supreme and intelligent at truly grounding the body so it can find stillness, so that it can heal and get to that theta state where that's the only way that our nervous system can really ground down. And the Reiki energy is like an adaptogen, right? So it goes to the parts of the body that need healing. It breaks apart energy blockages and restores the flow, restores restores the key of energy in the body. That's where the root word Reiki comes from. And when you're in that place of clarity, that's where intuitive messages can actually land. That's when you connect with spirit. And this is such an important time of the month to do this because it sets up your vision, your goals for the month ahead. So if you would like to join, I'll have the link to join the Divine Healers membership in the bio and join our magnetic group of experienced healers as we come together. Okay, so now for this episode, you hear me talking all the time about there's this strong connection between your body and your business. And I really just see this as both our frequencies, both our energies. So think about the times in your life when you felt really magnetic, where you felt like you were on fire, like things were just happening for you with ease, with grace. You were either getting opportunities, great friendships and relationships were flooding in. Maybe you got a job opportunity. Maybe you had um, an opportunity to move to the city that you've always wanted to move to. Like, remember how you felt in your body at that time. I can guarantee you, if you resonate with being an experienced healer, that that is when you felt really connected to your mind and body, that you were really grounded in the rituals and routines that you needed to take care of yourself at that certain point in time in your life. Well, the same thing can be said of your business. When you're feeling so good and alive in your body, when you're tending to your physical body's needs and the physiological imbalances, when you're tending to your emotional needs and your spiritual needs, it's going to directly reflect 
into your business because your business is just a little imprint of what your mind, body, soul complex is. And I say this not to frighten anyone or to shame anyone if they feel like their body's out of balance and that's why their business is, but it's just information. It's just data that you can collect. And actually, I think it's even more empowering, especially as healers, because you know how to heal your body. This is going to be the lesson that you get time and time again on your journey. And so you were given the resources, the obstacles, and the challenges to learn how to heal your mind, body, and soul, of course, so that you can help others, but also so that it serves as the basis for your business. You're going to run your business based on what works for your mind, body, and soul. And that's why also I truly believe when I guide all of my private clients and growing their business. I help them to get their business off the ground and what systems need to be in place and also what psychological beliefs are getting in the way from them from taking those next steps, from setting the goals and to getting to where they want into their business. It's so important to realize that your body and your business are connected. So I wanted to talk about this through the lens of our hormones because the majority of women that I work with were working to heal their hormones and They've already done extensive work on healing their hormones, and this is just a deeper karma that usually is coming up again on a different level that they need to heal. And I want to relate this to how this can show up specifically in our business so that we can find the flow in our business again and also feel so damn good in our bodies, just how we were meant to feel. So the first part is really identifying where you're feeling the imbalance in your body and with our hormones, and as we know, with Ayurveda, we can experience three different types of imbalances. Now, what's super interesting about Ayurveda is that the doshas describe all different types of energy types, all different cycles that we go through from the seasons, through the different climates that we live in, through our age cycles. When we're younger, we're in the kapha phase. When we're in our 30s and 40s, we're in the pitta phase. And then as we get towards the later years in life, we are in our vata phase. So there are all these cycles, right? Well, there's also doshas that describe our menstrual cycles. I often call these our moon cycles because a lot of times we can use the language that our moon cycle is likened to our menstruation cycle because just like the moon has these different phases, that is exactly how we as women or female identifying experience these cycles. So let's start with the kapha dosha. If you are feeling like you have a kapha hormonal imbalance, this is typically when you're experiencing imbalances during the day after your last day of your menses and kind of during your follicular stage of your period. So I believe it's about usually like seven to 10 days that they usually last. This is the kappa time. So if you're experiencing kappa imbalances during this time, like difficulty waking up, just feeling kind of lethargic throughout the day, unmotivated, stuck, weight gain, respiratory issues, feeling stubborn, feeling like you don't know what that next step forward is, a little afraid to take that next step forward, feeling recluse, maybe depressed. These are all symptoms that occur during that time. And this can relate to a kappa dosha imbalance. Now, similarly, in your business, you may also be feeling stuck. You may also be feeling like there's not a lot of creative ideas coming forward. You don't know what the next step forward is. You're afraid to take it because, you know, deep down, of course, we have all the answers within us, but we're actually just afraid to really act on the thing that we really need to do. That's exactly how it shows up in your business. So how can we heal if we have a kappa dosha hormonal imbalance. We always come back to the elements in Ayurveda. One of the elements that is so supreme at healing the Kapha Dosha is the fire element. This is because when Kappas are out of balance, they have too much of the earth and water element. The earth element, when there's too much of it, it could literally mean weight gain. It could also mean just feeling stuck. Think about it. If you were just like underneath so much sand and buried in the sand in the beach, you wouldn't be able to move. You'd be stuck, right? And if there's too much of the water element, this could be too much respiratory issues, a lot of mucus. It can also be related to our emotions, just feeling like can't stop crying or um, more so the sadness and depressed emotions usually come with the kapha dosha. So by inviting in the fire element, it can help to dry up some of that water element and it could also help to burn away some of the earth element. And 
when we think about that fire element, it brings in inspiration, it brings in movement, and it brings in creativity. And so already intuitively start to think of what does that mean for you? One of my favorite Kappa recommendations is movement. This doesn't have to be a super arduous and intense workout. You for sure maybe one day want to work your way up to that. But the first step is just maybe it's a 15 minute walk in the morning just to get things going. You know that feeling when you just wake up tired and then you're kind of like clunky throughout the day and the energy never elevates. You need that little bit of inspiration in the morning to get going. Initially, you may drag yourself, you may roll your eyes, you may not want to, but Kappas actually love movement and they thrive off of it. And then it becomes a thing where it's like non-negotiable. They need to do wake up in the morning and have that movement in order to move the energy, in order to have a lot of the inspiration and creativity that they are so seeking. Other rituals that are really good for Kappa is somehow activating your creative juices. This could be any type of art project. This could be dancing, singing, any type of creative expression. This helps to open up the floodgates so that your ideas can come back online. You can feel inspired. You can want to be around in social settings again. And the last recommendation that I love to give for Kappas is motivation and motivation through collaboration, through social settings. Kappas actually really love their people because they have really big hearts. So it's super important that they are constantly surrounded by them because sometimes, you know, they can kind of get in their own world and they can kind of shut down and want to recluse. Those times are definitely important that we need to have them. But if we're only doing that, then we're missing all these opportunities to connect with people to make us feel alive. So maybe it's even getting that friend to go on that morning walk with you so that you feel inspired and motivated and you can have a beautiful conversation while you're on that walk. Maybe you invite that friend to go to an art class together or just a fun summer social gathering or moon ceremony. And that really helps you to feel connected again and helps you feel inspired and creative and all those beautiful things. So off the bat, those are some of my favorite Kappa healing rituals. I have a lot more posted on my Instagram and you can find more about those when I talk more about diet and lifestyle practices. But I say those off the get-go just to get your creative juices flowing. I love empowering my clients to always trust their intuition. So if you're like, oh, I've already been thinking about something that relates to that, but wasn't that specifically, go with that for sure and start small. Okay, so now let's go into if you have a pitta hormonal imbalance. If you have a pitta hormonal imbalance, this will typically occur during the luteal phase. So this could be about two weeks during your whole moon cycle. And this is the time of the month where we get the classic PMS symptoms. So things like acne, things like angry, uh, being irritable, frustrated. We could get cramps during this time. We can get overheated maybe more inflammation, maybe like really strong hunger pains. These are all pitta imbalances. And it's so hilarious because we get these during the pitta moon phase cycle of the month. So that tells you if you have a pitta imbalance, you're going to experience these symptoms during this time of the month. So how can we take a hold of our bodies here? Well, let's first relate this to how it connects to our business. When we are, and I work with a lot of women who have this imbalance, when we're in the go, 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 and the constant I'm having to do in order to make my business flow, that's when we get more out of balance with the pit though, right? Because the fire element is going crazier. What stokes that fire element is forward action and it's effort. We need that for sure. Otherwise we'll have stagnation and have a couple imbalance. But if we have too much of it, that fire is going to go up in flames into basically an explosion and it's going to be hard to tame. That eventually is going to lead to burnout. It's going to lead to exhaustion and fatigue, which are also symptoms that can occur during the pit the moon phase if you are burnt out. And this will occur in your business. You're going to feel burnt out. You're going to feel exhausted. Like, oh my God, I just can't do this anymore. There's too much to do in my business. I can't keep up with it anymore. This, these are my clients who are taking like five clients a day, five days a week, and they're just feeling exhausted. Or maybe they're putting in so much effort and they feel like they're, you know, maybe not making the income that they need to, but they just keep on outputting more and more information and productivity. And um, even though they're not feeling that so and so results in success, they're still burnt out because their energy is being expended and put out there. So how do we heal this in body and business? Coming back to the elements, when we have too much of the fire element, you want to invite in the water element to help to cool the fire. We're not putting out the fire. It's so incredible that pitas have this inspiration and creativity that just comes so 
innate to them. But what we want to do is tame it. So with the water element, it's all about having cooling effects to the body. So for example, in the form of movement, I'm never going to tell a pit to stop working out. They need that for their body and their mental clarity. But how can we balance this with a cool down, especially during the summertime when we can often get overheated in the Northern Hemisphere? If you had that intense workout, can you implement a 10 minute cool down? This helps you stabilize your nervous system so that you're not going back into your day with the nervous system hijacked, feeling like you're on go and pumping out your hormones. Eventually, when you keep on pumping out the hormones, specifically estrogen, usually for people who are pitta dominant, you're going to exhaust those reserves and then it spills over to your progesterone hormones. And then that exhausts out those reserves. And then when both are exhausted, that's when we have burnout. So when you have things like rest and cool down, even during this phase of the month, it's extremely important. We can also relate this to your business by implementing rest and breaks. I know, and sometimes I literally wrestle with this and I've been doing this for a couple of years now, but in the middle of the day after lunch or somewhere in the middle of my day, I need to take a nature break because I get so hyper-focused and completing my to-do list and getting everything done. And then I get so irritable if someone tries to interrupt me or if something comes in my way as life hands us, I get pissed off really easily. But if I'm able to take that break, in nature and be open and receptive and compassionate to myself, I find the flow again and back in alignment with that water energy. And I can flow through my day. It can be okay if I don't get everything off my to-do list that day. Everyone's going to be okay. And the last thing for pittas and bringing the water element into their bodies and into their practices is full-on rest days. So this is super hard for pittas and I'm laughing just because it's super hard for me, but there has to be at least one to two days out of the week where it's complete rest. We are completely off social media. If that is a way that you are connected with your clients, whatever that platform is, is that you're away from that and that you're just tending to your body. And sometimes that literally looks like just laying on the couch, um, just taking baths and reading. I love sea salt baths, especially for pittas. Of course, in the summertime, it's more of like a lukewarm bath. But Epsom salts are really grounding to the nervous system. I love adding lavender. It's also grounding and cooling to the body and the nervous system. And so those are some rituals that I love that can bring pittas back into balance. Lastly, for our vata hormonal imbalances. This is the second biggest imbalance that I see. The pitta is the one that I work with the most with women. But these are the symptoms that are going to occur during your menstruation cycle. So things like really painful period cramps, things like being irritable, mood swings, high and low, extreme fatigue and exhaustion, bloating, gas and constipation are all going to be symptoms that occur during this cycle. Could also be things like blackheads, dry skin are all related, feeling anxious, unfocused, overwhelmed. Now, the reasoning for this is because a lot of times in our, I would say all the time in our culture does not implement this part of the cycle the most. It's missed because we work nine to five, five days a week, go, go, go. It does not allow those days for rest. You get lucky maybe if that day of rest lands on a Saturday and Sunday, but most likely it doesn't. And when we don't give our body that time to rest, we are going to experience these vata imbalance symptoms during our period. Now, similarly, in your business, what can occur is just feeling really anxious and unfocused and overwhelmed, feeling like you have so many ideas, but you don't know how to execute them and feeling just like you don't have the right structure for your business as well. A lot of times I work with women where they have so many ideas and they maybe have started to already implement all of them, but it's kind of very separated. There's no cohesion. There's no ground. There's no structure. So they're not making their goals. They're not executing it. They're kind of staying in this limbo area. So how we heal Vata with the elements is by bringing in the earth element. Vata is when they're too out of balance, they have too much of the air and ether element. That's why the air and ether element really resides a lot in the head. And when that's out of balance, think about it. There's so much movement in the mind. We're thinking, oh, maybe I should do that launch, or maybe I should do that project, or maybe I should take on that client or that client, right? The mind just like can't not stop moving. So during this time of the month, grounding is so important. Inviting in the earth element. This is literally just rest. 
I love, this is why I do Reiki healing experiences during the new moon, because it's the surest way to really ground the body, to really find stillness and ease in the body. I also love for vatas is to have really nourishing foods during this time of the month, because you're quite literally losing blood. So you need to replenish your nutrients. So things like sweet potatoes and brown rice and whole grains are really nourishing to the system. And the body will crave them naturally once you start to align with what your complex needs. It's naturally just going to start to crave these foods to keep you really grounded and rested. And then the last thing that I love to give Vatas is to tune into their spiritual practices. This looks so different for each person, but for me, it looks like Vedic meditation. I do that every morning. But I also do an extra ceremony on the new moon personally, not even just with my membership group, because I want to connect with my guides. I want to get their messages. I want to have space for them to land. This not only guides my Dharma as a person, how I can live a life of soul purpose for the next month ahead, whether it's my relationships or my business, but it also helps to guide my business where I get the ideas of, okay, what is my strategy this month? What are my goals this month? Because I'm in that intuitive state, I can really have this full picture perspective on what my body and what my business really needs to thrive. And this is what I see missing the most. When you don't have that time for rest and reflection, you're just spinning your wheels. You're just going on from the next thing to the next without grieving what did not work from the past cycle. This is so important. And I want to like underline, 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 because this is what really got me stuck in my business for a while. If something didn't work, I wanted to be overly optimistic. I said, no problem. Let's move on to the next thing. And you for sure have to be adaptable and quick on your feet and come up with creative solutions as an entrepreneur. But if you do not take that pause to rest, to grieve what did not work and admit that you're probably upset and then realize, okay, why didn't it work though? And how can I release whatever did not work so I do not project it on my new goal? That is also what's going to keep you into flow. That's what's also going to keep you away from burning out because you are no longer holding on to all that extra weight and gunk from the months past. Okay, so that was a lot of information. And I really was talking about it more through the lens of the body in this podcast. And the coming up episode, I'm going to go deeper into how this is connected to your business and how you can really restore the flow of your business by restoring the flow of your body. But I want everyone just to focus on, okay, what part of my cycle do I feel like I am challenged with the most? Where am I feeling the most imbalanced right now? And how can I just bring awareness to the symptoms, bring awareness that they're here? And the first step is going to be removing what is contributing to that imbalance. So let's say if it's the Kappa Dosha, well, what's going to contribute to the imbalance is staying still and not making any changes. If you're a Pitta, what's going to contribute to the balance is constantly outputting and doing your to-do list without taking a moment of pause and reflection. If it's Vata, it's going to be without you taking that moment of rest, without you taking a moment to really ground into your body so that you can restructure your business for the month ahead. So just start to notice and start to invite in these other elements into your physical body, into your daily rituals. For kappas, invite in the fire element with movement, with spicier foods. For pittas, invite in the water element with finding more moments of pause throughout your day and bringing in cooling qualities, whether that's a cool down after your workout or taking midday work breaks. And then for vatas, it's grounding, finding literal days for pausing and resting your body and your mind and taking time for some self-reflection to notice what did not work so that you can restructure and move on for the month ahead. Okay, everyone, I am so excited for you to start healing your hormones and aligning with your business. Like I said, in the coming episodes, I'm going to dive even further into this, but I would love to hear from you and what insights that you gain from this episode. You can always send me a DM on Instagram. I'll have my Instagram link below. And I want to hear what you're experiencing in your body and your business right now and what feels helpful, maybe what recommendations you're taking on. This has been so pivotal for my business 
like literally feeling so connected to my body and mind and finally having the right opportunities come in for my business. It all has occurred from using this system. So obviously I'm so passionate about it and sharing it. So please reach out to me on Instagram. And if you love this episode, I would adore you. If you commented, rated, and reviewed, you can do this on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. It would mean the world to me. And if you want an angel card reading, all you have to do is screenshot, send it to my DM and Instagram. Make sure you're following me and I'll be happy to give you just a little angel card reading. And that is all that I have for you. I hope you have a lovely new moon that's really nourishing, that's full of rest, that's full of all the intuitive practices, and I will see you all next week.